everyone, Dr. Hinky here. Welcome to my Chapter 7 video lecture. This is on photosynthesis. Uh, photosynthesis and cell respiration are two really, really important processes. Uh, photosynthesis in plants, cellular respiration in plants and animals. Uh, this is how plants get their food. Animals go out and eat it. So photosynthesis, they make their food while animals eat theirs. And then both of them have to convert that to a usable energy form for the cells, to ATP. And they do that through the process of cellular respiration. So first we're gonna look at how plants make their food with photosynthesis. There are a lot of similarities in these processes. Um, only basics can reverse. So they'll come across similar concepts in chapter eight. So we'll look at photosynthetic organisms so to just define what we're looking at, go through the process of photosynthesis, um, look at how plants convert solar energy into chemical energy, and then how they fix carbon dioxide, that is plants' carbon source. Remember, we're made of schnapps, and the C and the H uh, are key in all of those components in organic molecules. and the way plants get their organic carbon is from an inorganic carbon source, carbon dioxide. They fix it by turning it into a carbohydrate, attaching hydrogen that they're gonna get from water to it. So fix carbon dioxide. When we talk about carbon fixing, we're gonna put it into a usable form, so a carbohydrate. And then we'll look at some other types of photosynthesis. <clears throat> So first, photosynthetic organisms. All life on Earth depends on solar energy. It all starts with solar energy. Uh, animals that eat other animals still are dependent on solar energy and photosynthesis because the food chain starts down at that level. We have to have our herbivores eating the plants to give our omnivores or our carnivores something to eat. So it all starts with solar energy. Uh, photosynthetic organisms transfer that energy that comes in in sunlight into chemical energy, and that's the energy that's held in the carbon-hydrogen bonds of carbohydrates. We call them autotroph. Auto is self. Troph, if we talk about trophic levels in a food chain, that's your feeding order where you feed. Autotroph, they feed themselves. They make their own food. Um, so... Of course, while they're making their own food to feed themselves, heterotrophs eat them. So not only do they produce their own food, but then they become food for higher up on the food chain. Uh, and as I said, both autotrophs and heterotrophs are going to use the carbohydrates made through photosynthesis uh, as a source of chem chemical energy for the cells to do work. They'll take those carbohydrates and they will put them through the process of cellular respiration to get ATP. So the cell can use that energy source to do work. This is the graphic presentation of that same thing. Sunlight comes in so that autotrophs can feed themselves. They can grow. They can grow biomass. Uh, they release oxygen when they do that. They make glucose, which is incorporated into plant matter, biomass, which is then eaten by heterotrophs. Uh, and then that releases chemical energy through cell respiration. Cellular respiration releases water as a waste product and carbon dioxide. Uh, so we have these two going round and round. Photosynthesis, the organelle responsible for that in cells, is the chloroplast. Captures solar energy and converts it to chemical energy and carbohydrates. Cell respiration takes that energy stored, the chemical energy stored in carbohydrates in the mitochondria. We convert that to an energy source that our cells can use, ATP. And of course, we always lose some uh, energy as heat every time we convert from one type of energy to another. It's our second law of thermodynamics. 
So let's zoom in to plants and the place where photosynthesis takes place. Uh, it takes place on the green portions of plants. So it can take place in the stems anywhere that's green, uh, but primarily we're looking at the leaves. At leaves and uh, the leaves of flowering plants contain mesophyll tissue. And if we see meso, when you see meso, that prefix means middle. So meso mesophyll is this middle portion. There's the cuticle, kind of waxy coating that protects the plant from water loss. And then the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. So that first layer of cells. And then in the middle of that is the mesophyll. And here is where we see all of our chloroplasts, where the plant's going to get uh, its color. <clears throat> so chloroplasts are specialized organelles. They carry out photosynthesis. And the raw material for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and water. And so we need those two for photosynthesis to take place and then solar energy to drive that. Photosynthesis is building a big molecule from two smaller ones. So it is a synthesis um, reaction. It is a building reaction. Uh, our metabolism, we can divide into anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is the part of metabolism that builds bigger molecules from smaller ones. In cell respiration, we'll do a catabolic reaction. Catabolism takes a big molecule and breaks it apart to release energy. Remember our um, coupled reactions, our one-to-one -one reactions. So the roots are gonna absorb water from the soil <clears throat> and that's gonna move up through vascular tissue, through the leaf veins. Um, so the xylem will bring water up and then carbon dioxide enters the leaves through small openings. So leaves have little pores and these are called stomata. So stoma is a Latin word for mouth. So stomata, these little mouths to let carbon dioxide enter. And then that will diffuse into the chloroplasts or into the, into the mesophyll cells and find their way to the chloroplasts. Our chloroplasts are little green kind of bean-like structures that have stacks and stacks this internal membrane. So remember uh, the endo, uh, endosymbiont theory that these were once free living prokaryotic cells that were engulfed by a larger prokaryotic cell and then became incorporated. That engulfing through endocytosis would wrap it in a membrane. So we would expect it to have its own inner membrane that was the prokaryote's membrane and then the outer membrane. Ah, and look at that, it has a double membrane system, an inner and outer membrane. And this inner membrane actually is folded uh, and stacked in these, in these, they look like pancake stacks or stacks of coins. Um, these are the thylakoid, whoop, uh, and the granum, the stacks are the granum. Each one of these coins would be a grana and they're all kind of interconnected. You can see these connections in between them. So the membrane, this inner membrane that's stacked into the granum, this is called the thylakoid membrane. So these stacked coin-like um, inner membrane surfaces, those are the thylakoid membranes. And this is where we've got lots of chlorophyll and other pigments that are able to absorb solar energy. Uh, when we are looking at these energy convers conversions, electrons are uh, involved in this process. We're gonna activate uh, or excite electrons. Uh, and then we're going to add those to carbon dioxide. We're going to reduce it. Remember gain of electrons is reduction. So we're going to reduce carbon dioxide. It's going to gain electrons to become a carbohydrate. Within my chloroplast, here we just have some words that tend to be confusing. We have this inner membrane, uh, an outer membrane, the stacked thylakoids uh, are an extension of this inner membrane, and the stroma is the space around these. So we could think of this as similar to cytoplasm, but this is 
the aqueous solution that fills up the inner spaces of my chloroplast. So the stroma is aqueous solution. There are all sorts of things in, um, dissolved in here that we need. There are enzymes that are floating around in here. Um, there are cofactors and coenzymes, all the things that we need, right? That carbon dioxide that has diffused in is going to come in here. The water that has been brought in uh, through the xylem is going to come into here. So everything we need is dissolved and floating in here. All right, so let's step back and take a look at the kind of big picture photosynthesis chemical reaction. The chemical reaction, there aren't a whole lot of chemical reactions you should um, you should memorize, but you should know photosynthesis and cell respiration. In photosynthesis, I take six molecules of carbon dioxide, come in through the leaf from the atmosphere, six molecules of water that I bring up through the roots in the plant, solar energy comes in to drive this because if I'm going to build a big molecule from smaller ones, I need energy to drive the reaction. And I'm going to build from this carbon dioxide, these two inorganic molecules, I am going to build organic glucose, an organic carbohydrate monosaccharide of glucose, which is C6H12O6. And I'm also going to have six oxygens, um, dioxide that will be released as waste from this process. So this is my whole reaction, what's going on. Uh, if anybody remembers chemistry and stoichiometry, I've got the law of conservation of mass. Whatever elements I start with, I have to end with. I have six carbons here. I have six carbons here. I have 12 oxygens and another six here, so 18 oxygens. There are 12, six more, 18. I have 12 hydrogens. There they are, and I already accounted for these. And then that energy is used to build this glucose from those. So in photosynthesis, what I can do is I can take this big um, equation and I can break it into two separate processes to get there. So this is not one step. Remember we talked about enzymes, metabolic pathways, they have many, many steps. So there's lots of chemical reactions that take place in between here and here. This one arrow really represents arrow, 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 arrow. And each step has its own enzymes. We're going to try to keep this fairly simple with photosynthesis uh, and divide this into two parts. And then we'll slowly build and add more details. So we're going to keep coming back. Uh, but we have two parts to this process. The first part are the light dependent reactions. Sometimes shorten that to just the light reactions. Just like it says, these depend on light. This part of the reaction can only take place when solar energy is present, when light is present. Solar energy comes in and it's going to take this water and it's going to break the water apart. So I'm going to release some as oxygen. So some will be released into the atmosphere as waste. And those other hydrogens, I'm going to tack on to this NADPH. The big long name is in the book. Just recognize NADPH. So it's actually, I should probably have NADP in here. One of the things floating around in the, in the stoma, in the stroma, uh, is this coenzyme, NADP. Right? So NADP is just floating around in that stroma. And when this solar energy splits that water into hydrogen and oxygen, that hydrogen is going to get picked up by this coenzyme. Right? And the other thing, this solar energy, when I split this up and I move these hydrogens over here, is I'm going to produce some ATP. So this process here, I'm going to convert my solar energy into chemical energy in this ATP. Uh, and I'm going to kick these hydrogens onto this other molecule. 
The second part of the process are the light independent reactions. Just like it says, these are independent. They don't care if light happens or not. These used to be sometimes referred to as the dark reactions, but they don't have to take place in the dark. They can take place in the light or the dark. They're independent of the light level. They don't care. Uh, they're named after the person who discovered this cycle. Uh, so they're called the Calvin cycle. And in this, we're going to take this ATP from here. And we're going to use that energy to drive my hydrogens into the carbon dioxides. So up here, these carbon dioxides aren't even involved in the first step. Only the water's involved in the first step. And I split the water into two, into two parts, hydrogens and oxygens, and I get some energy. Here, I'm going to use those ATPs to take these oxygens off of NADP and drive them into the carbon dioxide to end up with glucose. And along the way, I get three more dioxides that will be exhaled as waste. So those oxygens are released from the plant into the atmosphere. Yay plants, they give us oxygen. This ATP from the first set of reactions is used as the energy source to drive the Calvin cycle. The NADPH comes over here into the Calvin cycle and drops off those hydrogens so that I can build my glucose, which really just becomes plant biomass. Some of that is used for metabolism. So some of this is actually used just to build more plant matter. Um, and some of that is used in cell respiration. All right, so that's kind of a big overview. And we're going to zoom in a little bit and keep building on this. So the light reactions, as I said, take place only in the presence of light. They do require light. They are energy capturing reactions. So chlorophyll is the pigment that's in, that, in those thylakoid membranes that absorbs solar energy. That energy excites the electrons that are circling. And one of the things that we're going to keep talking about, and you're going to hear a lot with photosynthesis and with cell respiration is, oh, the, ener the electrons are energized. The electrons move. This is a uh, oxidation reduction reaction. Oxidation, loss of electrons, reduction, gain of electrons. Well, where, what electrons am I talking about? All elements have electrons. Right? We've got all kinds of electrons. What electrons am I talking about? We're talking about the electrons in hydrogen. My hydrogen atom has an atomic number of one. It has one proton. It has an atomic mass of one. So it has no neutrons. A hydrogen is one proton and one electron, and that's it. So whenever you hear or read electron, when we're talking about the process of photosynthesis or cell respiration, look for the hydrogen. This is what's carrying the electron of interest. Okay. So remember, I said the solar energy comes in and splits that water apart, splits the oxygen off and leaves me this hydrogen so here's my electron that I'm following. This electron is going to move down an electron transport chain. So electron transport chains uh, are found on membranes, and they're a series of proteins on the membrane that basically play hot potato with this electron. Right? So that solar energy comes in, busts the oxygen off of the water, leaves this hydrogen, but it splits the proton from the electron. And this electron gets caught up by one of these proteins in the membrane. So that, that protein gains an electron, it's reduced. This hydrogen is oxidized. Then that protein gives it up to the next protein in the line. So it's oxidized and the next protein's reduced and so on and so on. So this hydrogen or this electron jumps down 
this electron transport chain. So as it moves, it starts out with lots of energy because it just got pulled apart from this. But as it gets passed from one to the next to the next, it's losing some energy as heat. So it starts to lose energy. But we're going to capture that energy that this electron has. So the electron transport chain is passing the electron down the membrane, but it's got to do something with these hydrogens, with these protons that are left behind. Uh, and so it's going to pump those inside the thylakoid membranes. So inside those stacks uh, of coins that look like stack of co so coins inside the grana, it pumps them into the thylakoids. It captures all this energy the electrons releasing as it bounces down that chain and it's going to make ATP and we're going to look at the enzyme that does that and how it happens in just a minute uh, and it makes it out of ADP because remember ADP is adenosine diphosphate plus phosphate. We break that whenever we use energy, but those two pieces are still floating around in the cytoplasm or in the stroma in this place case. And we're going to grab those, use this energy here to rebuild ATP from those parts. The electron transport chain is also going to, uh, or in this process, we're going to use this NADP and we're going to make NADPH. So here's another example, just like our ATP goes back and forth. ATP, we break off a, one of those three phosphates, we get ADP plus P. We put the P back together, we get ATP. We break it and we keep shuffling. NADP, this is one of my, uh, this is my photosynth photosynthesis coenzyme and its job is to be a hydrogen taxi. Its entire job is its NADP and when we break these, uh, this hydrogen apart, it's going to carry the H, the hydrogen proton, while this electron's being passed around, this is going to get picked up by NADP. It's going to become NADPH. NADPH is going to carry it to the Calvin cycle and drop it off where we need that H. And so it becomes NADP. That H gets dropped off in the Calvin cycle, and the NADP goes back to pick up the next hydrogen atom. So it's just this taxi cab. So think about what taxis do at the airport. Pick up a passenger, take them where they're going, drop them off, go back to pick up another passenger. Okay, so this one, the passenger is the hydrogen and it's going to the Calvin cycle. So my light dependent reactions, solar energy comes in, splits my water, splits the oxygen off. That oxygen gets respired, gets sent out into the atmosphere as a waste product of cell respiration. And those hydrogens get picked up by NADPH. Those electrons go bouncing down the electron transport chain and then reunite with this hydrogen at the end of it. And so that chain separates these two, the electron bounces down, reunites them. And in that process, I get some ATP. So there's my light reaction. The Calvin cycle reactions are going to take place in the stroma. So outside of those grant, outside of the thylakoid membrane, uh, it's in that part that would be the equivalent of cytoplasm in that aqueous solution. Carbon dioxide has come in uh, through the stoma on the leaves and it has uh, diffused into the cells and into the chloroplasts. And we're going to reduce it to a carbohydrate reduction, gain of electron. Oh, wait, you said electron. When I hear electron, I'm going to think hydrogen. If I put a hydrogen on here, what do I get? C-H-O. Ah, <gasps> carbohydrates. C's, H's, and O's. So that's what we're going to do with that hydrogen. So these reactions where I'm going to add that hydrogen, I'm going to build a bigger molecule, glucose. Uh, I need ATP, I need energy if I'm going to build a big molecule from smaller ones. And I need my taxi to bring my hydrogen to where I need it. 
So these reactions, as I said, the Calvin cycle, named after Melvin Calvin, um, he used an isotope of carbon as a tracer to find out where the carbon was going and what was happening to it. Uh, so that's why we call it the Calvin cycle. So the, the light independent reactions, so independent, I don't need light because I have a different form of energy now. I've converted my solar energy. I now have ATP. This came from the electron transport chain in the light reactions. And I bring that into the Calvin cycle um, in the stroma. My hydrogen taxi drops off its hydrogens and it goes back to pick up more hydrogens. I use this energy to reduce my carbon dioxide, gain electrons. Oh, here are my electrons I'm looking for. Uh, into glucose and release the rest of the oxygen in this process. So those are my two steps. Photosynthesis involves oxidation and reduction. Remember, oxidation is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. You can either remember that as Leo goes Gurr, loss of electrons, oxidation, gain of electrons, reduction. Or oil rig, oxidation is a loss, reduction is a gain. And these are the electrons we're talking about, the ones that are carried by that hydrogen atom. It's one hydrogen proton and one electron. So if you are asked to find, to tell what's oxidized and what's reduced in these reactions, look for the hydrogen. So if we lose a hydrogen, loss of electrons oxidation. When I say electron, I mean hydrogen. So loss of electrons oxidation. If I lose a hydrogen, I've been oxidized. If I gain a hydrogen, I've been reduced. So here in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide doesn't have any hydrogens. So it can't lose them. So it must gain them. So carbon dioxide will be reduced. And if I put that hydrogen in, I get C6H12O6. Those hydrogens go in, carbon dioxide is reduced to glucose. Well, water goes into this reaction too. This is my whole photosynthesis reaction. This has a hydrogen to lose. So the loss of electrons, oxidation. Water is oxidized into oxygen. So carbon dioxide gains an electron and a hydrogen proton. It's reduced. Water loses its electron and its hydrogen proton. So it's oxidized to oxygen. So that's how this is an oxidation reduction reaction. All right, so big overview. We zoom in into mesophyll cell, and here is my uh, chloroplast. Here's my thylakoid membrane in the grana. All oh, this is this, uh, the stroma. I have my solar energy coming in. I have my water that has come in. Uh, and my water and my solar energy are going to, the solar energy is going to split the water, so oxygen is going to leave. And those light reactions give me NADPH, my hydrogen carrier, and some energy so that I can go on and build a bigger molecule. This ADP and my NADP, um, these guys are in here in the, in the fluid in here, just waiting to be used. And we're gonna just keep recycling those. My NADPH is gonna go into the Calvin re cycle reactions as is my ATP. Carbon dioxide comes into the Calvin cycle, and this is gonna diffuse in, and I'm going to use that NADPH, drop off that hydrogen to my carbon dioxide, so I get an organic molecule. I need some energy to build that, and then I'm going to use that to build this precursor. Remember my ratio for carbohydrates is 
one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. So I'm going to build this precursor, these precursor molecules that I can then um, turn into glucose for energy or other carbohydrates for biomass. All right, we're going to zoom in even further. So that's kind of my big overview. We're going to zoom in. So first we need to look at how we're going to capture energy. We're going to use chlorophyll, we're going to use pigments, uh, and something called photosystems. So photosystem is a whole combination of molecules that are used to capture and convert solar energy. So pigments and photosystems are chemicals that absorb certain wavelengths of light. Um, and those wavelengths that are not absorbed are reflected or transmitted. That's the color we see. So the absorption spectrum, pigments that are found in chlorophyll absorb different portions of visible light. There are different types of chlorophyll. Green is the most prominent. Chlorophyll A is a green pigment and that reflects green. And that's the most prominent one in leaves, especially in the summer. In the fall, we see those don't do so well in lower light, and so we lose those, and that leaves the other pigments behind and they become visible to us. That's why we see that change in leaf color. Uh, an adsorption spectrum is a graph that shows what gets absorbed, what gets reflected. Chlorophyll absorbs lots of the reds and blues uh, and reflects green. And then there are other pigment, pigments like carotenoids that absorb violet, blue, green, and reflect yellow and orange. So here, here's our visible light, and we see chlorophyll A. It's absorbing here, oh, but it's reflecting here in the green areas, and then absorbs outside of that. Our carotenoids, they're going to absorb here, so they're reflecting here on the orange-red end. Right. So plants are going to convert solar energy. The light reactions, so we talked about the light reactions. We have the light reactions in the Calvin cycle. The light reactions have two alternate electron pathways. We're going to mostly focus on the non-cyclic pathway. Uh, but we have a non-cyclic pathway, meaning it's one direction, and a cyclic pathway where things just recycle again and again. Both of these produce ATP. The non-cyclic pathway is one that produces ATP and my NADPH that I need in the Calvin cycle. So we're going to focus on the non-cyclic pathway because this is the one that gives us both of the things we need. Uh, the cyclic pathway is just kind of like bonus ATP. Um, so we aren't going to talk about that too much. So if you know the non-cyclic pathway and you read something that doesn't describe it, you know it's the cyclic. Uh, so the non-cyclic pathway takes place in those thylakoid, in the thylakoid in that membrane, includes the electron transport chain. There are two photosystems involved, photosystem one and photosystem two. These were named in the order they were discovered. Photosystem one was discovered first but our photosynthesis process begins with photosystem two. So photosystem two, this is a combination of pigments and enzymes that let us capture that, uh, that solar light. So the photosystem is where the chlorophyll is, um, where the enzymes are that help this happen. So the non-cyclic, in the non-cyclic pathway, photosystem two is what captures that solar energy, that sunlight energy, and splits the water apart. So the, an electron is ejected from the reaction center, center from chlorophyll. That electron, really I mean the hydrogen and oxygen are split apart and then the hydrogen is split into a proton and electron. That electron travels down the electron transport chain. So remember it's like playing, those proteins in the membrane are playing hot potato with that electron and it's losing a little bit of energy at each transfer, that electron bounces down from pro protein to protein, down the electron transport chain on the thylakoid membrane until it lands on photosystem one, another pigment complex. So we got that electron from the water. The oxygen is released, it's a waste. 
But when we split that and play hot potato with the electron, we still have this proton, my hydrogen proton here. Uh, and we're going to build that up in the thylakoid chamber. So we're going to get a high concentration of this. Right? Well, remember, diffusion molecules will flow down the concentration gradient. So it would try to get outside of the thylakoid as its concentration builds. We're going to use that concentration gradient to produce ATP. So we're going to build up all these hydrogens inside the thylakoid membrane. On the inside, it wants to get out. We are going to control its release and we're going to make it go out through an enzyme that will build ATP. It'll add P to ADP. So we're going to, through controlled release, Right, so facilitated diffusion, we're going to go out through a protein, and that protein is an enzyme that builds ATP. We're going to use this concentration gradient to drive that process. This electron has bounced down the electron transport chain, lands on photosystem one. This also captures solar energy uh, to eject an electron, same thing. And this electron is transferred to NADP, giving me NADPH. This other electron has bounced back. It's joined its hydrogen, uh, and so it can connect to NADPH. But we're going to use these to make ATP. So my solar energy comes in, my water splits, my oxygen leaves, and I use the electron transport chain to generate ATP. And I use my NADP, my taxi cab, and photosystem one to generate NADPH. And both of those are going to go into my Calvin cycle. So if we zoom in on the membrane, this is my photosystem two. Here's my pigment complex. Solar energy comes in and hits this and splits the water, gives me two hydrogens that are stuck inside that thylakoid, so they're inside one of these. The oxygen diffuses out, this electron gets excited, and there it comes, separated from that hydrogen, and it bounces down the electron transport chain. And as it does that, we are going to capture that energy of that electron bouncing down here. That's going to, what's going to let us maintain this concentration gradient, keep this from diffusing across the membrane, it's this energy. And then we're going to capture that. We're going to let these hydrogens flow back through the membrane, and that's how we're going to make ATP, because we're going to flow through, not just through the membrane, but through the enzyme ATP synthase. ACE, if it ends in ACE, it's probably an enzyme, and that name tells you what it does. It's the enzyme that synthesizes ATP. And the ATP is going to go to the Calvin cycle to build some glucose. Over here at photosystem one, that electrons come back down here. Uh, we've let the hydrogen that was split over here, this proton, we've let it reconnect with its electron. So I now have hydrogens over here. Well, I still have solar energy coming in. We're going to excite that electron. Again, it's going to bounce up here. That electron is separated from its hydrogen. There it's its hydrogen. And they're all going to come together at NADP to form NADPH. So now my hydrogen gets carried to the Calvin cycle where it can become part of a glucose molecule. So that's the non-cyclic pathway. The cyclic pathway just kind of keeps going on over here where I can, this, uh, this photosystem can continue to break hydrogens and release electrons and come back here. So it'll just kind of be this cyclic motion that will actually generate some ATP. So plants are converting solar energy. The light reactions capture that energy in the photosystems. The photosystems of pigment complex kind of works like an antenna, only it's collecting solar energy instead of radio or other kind of waves. Uh, they're located on the membrane. 
photo system two starts it, even though it's named two because it was discovered first. It's the pigment complex and electron acceptors. So my electron acceptors, my NADPs, and it receives electrons from the splitting of water and the oxygen is released. The electron transport chain consists of cytochrome complexes and plastic quinone. quinone. Uh, these, are, these are the molecules that are going to play a hot potato with the electrons. And this carries the electrons from photosystem 2 down that chain to photosystem 1. And it also pumps hydrogen from the stroma into the thylakoid space to build that um, concentration gradient. Photosystem 1, same thing, pigment complex, electron acceptors, and it's adjacent to the enzyme that reduces, so all chemical reactions in cells have an enzyme that speeds them up, so we have an enzyme that helps this happen at Photosystem 1, that lets my taxi cab, helps my ca taxi cab to pick up the hydrogen. ATP synthase complex, so ATP synthase, this is my enzyme that's in the thylakoid membrane, that's an enzyme that synthesizes ATP. And it actually works, it's like a little, like a dam. It's a, think of it as a, a channel through the protein that has a little rotor on it. And every time a hydrogen flows through, it spins that rotor and that pushes the phosphate together to adenosine diphosphate, pushes that together to make ATP. So this is really busy, but it's kind of the whole process. Right, so here's my thylakoid space in here. Out here around the outside would be the stroma. The thylakoid space, this is where I'm going to build up this hydrogen ion concentration so that I have a concentration gradient. And these guys all want to flow out, but we're going to prevent them from flowing out by using that electron's energy. We're going to build this concentration gradient until we're ready to make ATP. We'll let them flow through ATP synthase. So starting at photosystem, uh, photosystem 2, light comes in and splits my water. Two hydrogens remain, okay, H2O. We have two hydrogens here. And that electron gets bounced off here to go get passed down the electron transport chain from here to here to here to here to here to here. Um, and those hydrogens are left behind here. The electrons and the hydrogen really want to come back together, right? That electron wants to be where it belongs, and it belongs with that hydrogen. This hydrogen has a positive charge. The electron has a negative. It wants to come back. So we bounce these electrons down here, and now they're outside. Right? So that transfer of electrons yields some energy as we pass those down, and we use that energy to keep these in here until we're ready. And now we say, oh, okay, let them go. And it's like opening the dam. ATP synthase, this is the only way those hydrogens are allowed out. Now they start flowing out here. And if you think there's a little rotor in here that's going to take this phosphate, tack it onto this ADP, and give me ATP. Every time a hydrogen goes through, we're going to generate, it takes more than one, but we're going to generate some ATP from this process. This is called... Chemiosmosis. And so ATP is, uh, by producing this, uh, this is a form of osmosis because we started with water, right? So we call it chemiosmosis. It's a chemical component. And similar to osmosis, we're going to let that hydrogen that we split from the water flow back out down its concentration gradient. Once that hydrogen's back out here, it wants to go find its electrons. It joins them up and it gets picked up by NADPH to get carried out to the Calvin cycle. So that's a busy graphic there, but that's everything that's going on with that electron transport chain once we have split up this um, water in photosystem two. And then out here, We'd have photosystem, well, photosystem ones right here where we're going to bring these two together. 
Photosystem 2 has NADP reductase, the enzyme that reduces NADP, lets it gain electrons, and that hydrogen joins up with it, that proton. So that's where that all comes from. And then we go to the Calvin cycle. You can call this a sugar factory, right? The end product of photosynthesis is sugar, carbohydrate. This is the sugar factory. Here's where we make the sugar. Light reactions, no sugar made. The light reactions, all I get is my ATP to build a bigger molecule and my hydrogen carried to where it needs to be in the hydrogen taxi. They both come to the sugar factory to make the sugar. This is a cycle. It's cyclical. If you think of cyclical, think of a clock. We move from midnight, we change to one o'clock, changes to two o'clock, changes to three o'clock, and on and on. At 11 o'clock, when I add an hour, I'm back to 12. And then I change to one, to two, to three. So I have this series of changes, but they always lead back to the same place. So that when we talk about cycles in photosynthesis and cell respiration, remember that they're always gonna come back to the same place. So we're gonna use our carbon dioxide to produce our carbohydrates. This is the most common type of photosynthesis. We're gonna talk about some other types at the end of this, but this is known as C3 photosynthesis. Not because it involves three stages, but because the carbon, uh, the carbohydrate that we produce at the end of the Calvin cycle has three carbons. So there are, there are three stages in the Calvin cycle. There's carbon dioxide fixation, carbon dioxide reduction, and then Ruby P regeneration. So those are my three steps. So in the first one, carbon dioxide is attached to this molecule called, it's a five carbon molecule called Ruby P. Right? So Ruby P, it's ribulose 1,5-biphosphate. But bisphosphate, we don't need to be just Ruby P, remember Ruby P. Uh, the enzyme Ruby P carboxylase is what attaches this carbon dioxide. Remember, carbon dioxide came in from the atmosphere and it's going to be attached to this molecule that is already out there in the stroma. This results in a six carbon molecule. Right? This is a five carbon molecule. I attach another carbon, a six carbon molecule that's going to be split into two three carbon molecules. We call these three PG. So it's three phosphoglycerate, it's three carbon, two three carbon molecules, three PG. So it's three because of the three carbons. That enzyme here speeds up the reaction. Mm -hmm. um, Rubisco is the common name for Ruby P. This is the the enzyme, instead of saying Ruby P carboxylase, you can shorten it to Rubisco. So every reaction has an enzyme involved. And when, once this happens, once my carbon dioxide is attached to Ruby P and then split into two, three carbon molecules, I say it's fixed. All right. So I say it's fixed because I have fixed it into something that looks like a carbohydrate because my five carbon ruby P has hydrogens attached to it, right? So it becomes a carbohydrate. Not the one I want though. So step one, my carbon dioxide fixation. Carbon dioxide comes in. Remember this is a cycle. So here we are car carbon dioxide coming into this cycle. It joins this five carbon molecule, this intermediate. How does I, how do I become, or how do I become this interme intermediate? Sorry, this is a six carbon here. Here's my Ruby P, my five carbon molecule. Remember, this is a cycle. This would be like 11 o'clock. I add an hour, I'm at 12 o'clock. Right, so here is where I come full cycle. The carbon dioxide comes in. I form this intermediate that is split into 
two 3PG molecules, my 3-phosphoglycerate. So here, my Ruby P had carbons and hydrogens. It had um, five carbons, and it had hydrogens, and I've added carbon dioxide to it. So I now have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. So this is now a carbohydrate. I have fixed my carbon dioxide. So I go to my next step. So here's step one, where I go from 11 o'clock to midnight. I add a carbon dioxide. I've fixed my carbon dioxide. Now that ATP that came over from my light reactions, I am going to use that to drive the next part of this. Reduction of carbon dioxide. Gain of electrons is reduction. What electrons am I gaining? The ones in hydrogen. So the other thing that's coming in is my hydrogen, my NADPH. So my ATP comes in and it's going to put the give me the energy to take this hydrogen from NADPH. So this is going to be oxidized. It's going to lose this electron, and I'm going to add it on to that 3PG. So I'm going to add some hydrogens on here. And when I do that, I am going to reduce that G3P, and I'm going to have a form Right. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have G3P is what I end up with. I started with 3PG. You can see all these PGs. I don't think you have to really know the 3PGs, all the specific ones, but at the end, do you know we have G3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This is chemically a really stable compound that can store a lot of energy, and it's a great building block. So I build, I use that to build glucose, which is what I want, which is what comes out of my photosynthesis. But this is a very flexible molecule. I can use it to build all sorts of other organic molecules. So I'm going to make glucose, but I've got flexibility. I can make other things out of it if I need other things other than glucose, because this glucose is going to go to the mitochondria for cell respiration, plant probably doesn't need all of the glucose that it's possible to make out of here. So it's going to use this precursor molecule, this G3P. It could also build other molecules. All right, so here's my reduction of carbon dioxide. My 3PG comes in. I add some energy to build BPG, a bigger molecule, and I drop off that hydrogen so that I have G3P. So use energy to build a bigger molecule, and then add a hydrogen to it. I have one last step in this because it's a cycle. I have to come full cycle. Uh, I have to regenerate that Ruby P. So Ruby P is going to use that, um, is going to be added to the carbon dioxide that comes in. So I need to replace it. I need to get from my final G3P to Rubisco, um, to my ribulose 1B bisphosphate. So every three turns of the Calvin cycle, five of these G3Ps, right, and this is a three carbon molecule, every three turns, five of these are used to come back and make three Ruby Ps. Remember, my Ruby P is a five carbon molecule. So I'm going to take these. Um, three turns, right, or three turns of the Calvin cycle to take my three carbon molecule and make three Ruby P's, which is a five carbon molecule. Right. So, so my three stages in the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide fixation, I turn it into a precursor carbohydrate, carbon dioxide reduction, I add those hydrogens on it, so that I get my G3P, which is my sugar. That is my precursor to my glucose. That is going to give me everything my plant needs. And then I regenerate, because I have to come full circle, I gotta get back to 11 o'clock here, I regenerate Ruby P.
So the Calvin cycle, this is really important. That G3PN product is really important because it can, it can be converted to all sorts of stuff. I can make glucose to go to the mitochondria for cell respiration, but I can also make all sorts of other things. So this hydrocarbon skeleton of G3P, I can make fatty acids. I can make glycerol, gives me plant oils. Uh, I can make a simple sugar, glucose phosphate, glucose, which I can use in um, cell respiration. Fructose, which fructose is how plants store their sugar. Starch and cellulose, my plant walls, um, my long-term glucose storage in plants, and amino acids. I can make all of these things from this precursor molecule. So we call it the sugar factory because sugar is the one we like to follow, and that's what's in our equation is the glucose. But I can make all sorts of stuff from this. So I can make my amino acids so I can make proteins. I can make my fatty acids so I can make plasma membranes. I can make my glucose phosphate so I can get energy, so I can store energy, and so I can build structural components. So that G3P is a very flexible molecule. All right. That is my C3 photosynthesis. Um, not all plants use C3 photosynthesis because there are some problems that go along with it. In hot, dry climates like the Great Plains or in the summer in Southern Calif California, uh, in deserts, the stomata has to close. Otherwise, the plants will, will water will diffuse out. Uh, it'll be evaporated from the plant. So when the stomata closes, CO2 is not coming in. But cell respiration is going on. Um, the light reactions are going on, and so the oxygen level increases. When that happens and I don't have carbon dioxide coming in, carbon dioxide has to come into the Calvin cycle. Otherwise, that Ruby P is left there by itself. And what happens is the oxygen will combine with Ruby P. Um, and then it will lead to the production of carbon dioxide, which just spirals out of control. This is called photorespiration. It's really dangerous because even though plants use carbon dioxide to build glucose, uh, if they don't have, um, if they don't have this cycle to go into, then we're going to shut down. So not good. So plants that live in hot, dry climates have come up with two different strategies uh, to take care of photorespiration. So some are called C4 plants. Remember C3 is that our end product is a three carbon, um, three carbon carbohydrate. C4 plants get around photorespiration by making a four carbon outcome partway through. And they go through, uh, they partition the carbon fixation in the process of photosynthesis. So my carbon fi fixation is the first step of my, uh, my cycle, my Calvin cycle. Instead of doing this like C3 plants, where we were just doing this in the chloroplast, the chloroplasts are all in the mesophyll. Um, they have structured their plants in a way that they can partition by location where those two processes are happening. So they organize their cells into um, a different structure where we're going to surround just here and we're going to partition first part second part of my process. So we we differentiate the process by location. So here the carbon dioxide comes in, Calvin cycle, we're all in the mesophyll, um, in those mesophyll cells. In C4 plants, the mesophyll is around these bundle sheaths. So I have my light reactions going on here. Or I come in, I start the process, I get my C4 fixation out here and so I fix my carbon out here and then I jump into the rest of the cycle in a different place, different location. So we separate the processes out by location in C3 plants. Corn is an example, or in C4 plants rather. Corn is the most common example uh, of a C4 plant. If you think grow lots of corn on the Great Plains in the summer when it's hot and dry. Uh, cactus and um, Things like pineapple plants use CAM photosynthesis. So CAM is the other type. Um, 
crassulation acid metabolism. CAM plants are going to partition that carbon fixation by time. So they're going to fix carbon dioxide at night to form that four carbon molecule. Then they store that four carbon molecule and they wait until daytime uh, when the light reactions are going on to continue the Calvin cycle. So C4 plants are going to partition carbon fixation by location in the plant, in the leaf. Uh, CAM photosynthesis, my cactus, are going to partition the process of carbon fixation by time, day and night. All right, and that is it for photosynthesis. I will have cell respiration up for you uh, tomorrow, uh, sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Thank you.